is the ecliptic. So here, um, the ecliptic is the path that the sun appears to move across the celestial sphere. So you'll see that it crosses the celestial equator um, at two points of year. So at the spring equinox and at the vernal equinox. And if I follow that ecliptic up, then you can see that the sun would make, sorry, this is a little bit hard to control with my mouse here. There we go. Um, you'll see that the sun is the um, highest uh, off of the celestial equator in the summer. And then in the winter time moves below the, the celestial equator. Sorry, I'm, I'm just still getting used to driving in starry night. There we go. All right, and so this is, um, you know, why is the uh, entire ecliptic tilted with respect to the celestial equator? Well, it's because the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to its orbit around the sun. So if the Earth is orbiting around the sun in a plane, then it's actually tilted off of that plane. And most of the planets are tilted with respect to the um, celestial or the solar plane, uh, as we'll see in the class. And some of them are tilted all the way sideways. So um, Uranus is tilted all the way sideways and it basically rolls along like a bowling ball in space, which I think is uh, very funny. All right, so this is the ecliptic. And if I go back to kind of where we started from over here, then you can notice here's the sun. Um, come on, mouse. There's the sun following the ecliptic. Near it is Jupiter, Venus, Uranus. Here's Neptune, Mercury. Um, I don't see Mars here, but it'll be somewhere else on the ecliptic elsewhere in space. And if I play time forward, then you can actually see how the planets appear to move on the ecliptic and the sun as well. So here I'm playing on a one hour time span and you can see the planets and the sun all appear to move um, higher and um, toward the, uh, if I'm getting my directions right, toward the east in the sky. And so these are just, these move a lot slower than the stars and they can, you, you know, because they're moving on a background of much further away stars, um, most cultures called planets uh, wanderers. And that's why, you know, many of um, the planets are named after gods because it seemed like these were, you know, very powerful celestial beings if they could just move around on the sky at will. Um, the ecliptic is not only important for the planets, but also for the constellations. So the constellations that the sun moves through or appears to move against on the ecliptic, those, are, those constellations are the zodiac. And so here is some images that illustrate how Earth, if Earth is um, the person and the sun is where the sun is here, um, and we're pretending to be Earth at various times of year, which group of students would, would be here correctly illustrating why we see different constellations in the summertime than we do in the wintertime. So I'm seeing mostly C. And so let's investigate C. So just kind of developing a physical intuition. So if uh, maybe the student at the top is um, representing the earth at the summertime, and the one at the bottom is representing the earth at the winter time. Um, B doesn't make sense because four students are not necessary to show two seasons. Um, the earth, D can't be right because the earth isn't at the same place during the winter and the summer. So we're between A and C. And C, um, the students are both pointing out away from the sun, whereas in A, one student is pointing toward the sun and the other away from the sun. So C is correct because the students are here both pointing toward the night side of the sky. So here in the, um, if this is the summertime, then uh, this student is looking at the night sky in the summer and, you know, um, 12 hours later would be pointing toward the sun. So, you know, the sky appears to move around us once per day. And so if you want to see the night side of the sky, you have to be facing away from the sun. So that's where C is coming from, if you were gonna build a, a model to show um, where you're seeing constellations. And this relates to the ecliptic because um, the, the, um, the constellations that we see at night change throughout the year, right? They change throughout the night as they move around us on the celestial sphere because of the Earth's rotation on its axis. But then over the course of the year, 
um, if I'm in August here, looking outward toward the night side of the sky, I'm going to see, you know, Sagittarius and Capricorn. And if I move around toward the, um, you know, the about six months later and look to the night side of the sky, I'm going to see, you know, Leo and Cancer. So I'm going to see different constellations as I, I face the nighttime side of the sky throughout the course of the year. And so this is the, um, uh, the projection of the ecliptic and the sun appears to move through all these constellations. Um, that's why these zodiac constellations are so important in astrology because um, it, it was considered important, um, you know, where the sun were, was at the moment of your birth. So where the sun was, you know, what constellation the sun would have appeared to be in, which I think they call the house. Um, that was supposed to be one of the important pieces. And then apparently the location of the moon was also a factor. And there's all kinds of, you know, uh, different qualities tied to all of those things. I don't know much about astrology um, and it seems quite complicated, um, but you can see here where it comes from. Okay, so why is it that the sun and the moon and the planets all appear to move on the ecliptic? If you have any ideas of why do they appear all on the same path in the sky, type those ideas in the chat. I'll give you about 30 seconds. All right, I'm seeing lots of good ideas here. So um, based on the tilt of the Earth's spin and based on the orbital plane of the solar system and the movement of the planet. So here's the um, planets as they actually appear to orbit the sun. So this is the, the true state of affairs. And if we kind of zoom out, we can see that most of the planets are orbiting within a flat plane, All right? So Pluto is a bit of an uh, exception, no longer classified as a planet anyway. Um, but for the most part, all the planets are in a completely flat plane. Some of those planes are tilted a little bit, um, but the reason for this is because of the formation of the solar system. Um, it started out as a big cloud of gas and dust. We'll go through this in more detail later in the term. And it, as it started to collapse, it rotated quickly. And um, you know how if you, s like it's kind of like rotating, um, like tossing a pizza crust. Um, it, as you toss the pizza crust, um, the centrifugal forces push things out toward the edge. It's an effect of rotation. And so um, if you have a round object and you spin it, then it flattens a little bit. Um, and so that's what happened to the solar disk. And it, so the initial cloud eventually got flattened to a disk and the planets formed within that disk. And so that's why everything moves within this uh, plane because it was formed that way. It was formed when it was in a plane already. Um, and so because they're all in the same plane, all the planets and the sun, um, well, and the Earth, then when we look at the ecliptic, we see all of the planets orbiting the sun in the same circle. And we see the sun moving in that circle because of the Earth's motion within that plane. So when we go back to the ecliptic, all of the planets are very near that ecliptic. All right, so here's Mars. All right, so that's the ecliptic.